Now, Shaq, how does it actually work then? How does it work in the mind? And how, what, what actually goes on in the mind when you're treating somebody with Shaq? Therapy? Well, um, the mind reacts fantastically to metaphors. Uh, if anybody knows hypnosis, studying hypnosis, they understand how powerful metaphors really are. Uh, a metaphor for those who don't understand what one is, uh, basically it's um, a story about something else that actually relates to the problem. Um, as an example, if you're doing hypnosis on someone and you're doing a regression and you need to take someone back in time, um, consciously they won't know how to get there. So what I do is use a metaphor to let them understand that they don't even need to think about how to get there. And the metaphor that I use normally is um, a man is in a field and he's walking through this field, lovely high corn and it's a nice hot sunny day. And this horse with a saddle on its back comes walking towards him. He looks around, he can't see the rider. There's no rider anywhere. So he climbs on top of the horse to get a better view of the field, looking for any, any collapsed areas in the corn where the rider may have fell up or fallen off. Uh, he can't see any. And then all of a sudden the horse starts to walk out of the field, goes down the country lanes, and goes for quite a few miles down these country lanes. Eventually comes to this farm. The, the horse goes into the farmyard area towards some stables where there's a lot of work hands walk, walking about and also the, the owner of the farm, which is the farmer, he turns around and sees the man on the horse and says to him, oh, you found my horse. He says, yeah, it's fine. He said, but how did you know where I lived? He said, but I didn't. The horse brought me. That metaphor now relates to your own mind being the horse. Just let it take you where it needs to go. So your unconscious guides you where you need to go and you don't need to think about why or where you're going because you'll exactly. go where you need to go anyway. Exactly. So yeah. metaphors are very powerful. So going back to your first question um, about Shaq, what we do is we bombard a person with metaphors, which means you don't need any hypnotic skills. You don't need to be a hypnotist to use the Shaq treatment. Um, you, it's a very powerful thing. All you need to do is show that you know what you're doing. So in your face, in your actions, your mannerisms, be very confident. Once you're very confident, that person who is putting their trust in you will now look at you as if you know what you're doing and their unconscious mind will say, fine, take over. Teach me how to make my limbs move. This is basically it. So then we use metaphors. The metaphor will be shown a bit later on on this particular DVD, so I won't use that metaphor now, but we use metaphors um, which help to stimulate the mind. So for instance, someone's had a stroke, there's a minor explosion, for an example, within the brain. Um, the signals are still trying to get through that explosion. So with metaphors, we can teach the signals how to go elsewhere. Uh, it gives the mind and the person a better understanding of suddenly, it's what we say in the UK, the penny drops. It's like, I had never thought of that. And this is why Shaq treatment is very powerful because it teaches you something you never thought of. Now you can go to physio as much as you like. Keep going to physio if you feel you still need to go to physio, even after the Shaq, because you've still got a lot of wasted muscle tissue, so it still needs to be, it still needs to get up to par. The only difference being is that you feel more in control of your limbs. So this is why Shaq is so powerful. So Shaq is like, um Instead of being a treatment as in you are treating the patient, what you're actually doing is showing the patient how to heal themselves using, using unconscious suggestion. Correct, that's right. We make it very simple. Um, I always have a saying when I'm teaching people, um, we, we, I teach in layman's language. I also teach in ABC 1, 2, 3. If it's ABCD 1, 2, 3, 4, it's too complicated. <laughs> so A, B, C, one, two, three. Keep it simple. And yes. the, the best things in life always work better when you go back to basics. In any form of work or whatever it is, go back to basics, you'll find you can correct things a lot better when you go back to the very, very basics. This is what we do, take it back to basics. That's, yeah, it sounds very easy and very straightforward. Uh, um, so. so so, so when, when, when you're saying the, the person who is experiencing shack treatment won't go into trance, but what they will suddenly experience is they, so, they can suddenly f 
feel their right arm or the right leg again and suddenly they stop they stop drooling or they stop they stop these stroke symptoms and suddenly it feels like a miracle exactly right yeah what it does effectively it um, for what for simplicity it balances the body so when someone has had uh, some some form of trauma to the brain um, the if it affects a certain limb or the one side you feel totally out of balance so using the metaphors combined with this positive attitude it really draws out their unconscious mind gets stimulated it stimulates itself so much it is so intrigued in what you have to offer it makes the person's peripheral vision go wider for one because the peripheral vision the wider it gets the more you absorb the more you can take in and there's a, there's a, a, a fallacy about you can't teach an old dog new tricks I've done this on an 80 odd year old person who insisted she could not walk she insisted she couldn't walk uh, um, I went down as I, I was invited down she didn't want to see me uh, she was against it all didn't want no false hopes and just after us, using my uh, usual charm and say what letter comes after S in the alphabet she naturally said T and I said I'd love one went in there sat down spoke to this lady I talked very fast which you need to do the unconscious man likes to be stimulated with speed he likes to take things in very very fast right. so you need to learn to speak which fast is the opposite of, which is the opposite of hypnotic language I suppose because you want to speed speed up the conversation and exactly right yes so this way it would be that's a reverse in the, exactly right the opposite to hypnosis hypnosis initially is an induction which takes you down and down, it takes yeah. slowly and deeper uh, whereas this shack you need to be able to stimulate the, the mind to be intrigued so the conscious mind is very bored as was this lady's face when she's looking at me this 80 odd year old lady looking at me and I could tell she was bored but I did actually say to her well it's not actually you I'm talking to it's your unconscious mind so if you feel like you want to nod off you're very welcome to because the, even the quieter I talk the less and less you can actually consciously hear me but your unconscious mind can really really hear me so I'm stimulating her conscious mind to be intrigued even more within the space of half a cup of tea this lady stood up, held onto a zimmer frame, which she still needs with the vertigo. She still needs it. Her son-in-law was sat watching. She got on the zimmer frame and walked straight away to the kitchen. Her son-in-law was very impressed because apparently she couldn't even put one foot in front of the other prior to me going to the house. So there's a big step for her. All she can do then from then on is improve. All we've done is taken away these mental blockages that she had using the shark treatment. It sounds fantastic. For example, you could be you, you could be doing it to somebody without them even knowing you. You could be talking to somebody in this condition in a pub or something, and then suddenly they'll get out of the chair and walk away. Has happened. And and that would be just that is just fantastic, you know, that that, that you can do things like that. We had a man, um, uh, I spoke to this gentleman in a pub quite a few years ago. Um, basically, when I was discovering that this needed a name, because uh, without a name like Shack. It's just an anything or nothing. So we, we give it a name just so we understood what particular part of uh, this uh, therapy we're talking about. So we call it shack, shack meaning to remedy. Again, like as you just said, there was a man sat in a bar in a wheelchair. His family had brought him, and uh, the the son-in-law was called Mike, and he knew about my hypnosis skills, etc. And said, "We've been told that my my father-in-law uh, has has got a psychosomatic." Uh, leg loss basically so I said what's happened was he had an injection of dye into his into his spine so they could do this uh, test uh, and he, he, he felt that it had hit some form of nerve and stopped his legs from moving and he was he was adamant that he was not going to be able to walk ever again so I went over and just sat and talked to this chap and never mentioned anything about his legs didn't mention anything about that at all but what I did do was instill metaphors i mm. used the metaphors as part of this normal language it was a pro it was a conversation that he thought was totally stupid irrelevant why on earth are you talking about this particular thing when uh, you know we're in a pub what do you want to talk about this thing for which i won't say what is just yet and within minutes he started to scratch his leg so i <laughs> said is your leg itching he went, um yeah well, how do you know it's itching? If you can't feel it, well, I can now for some reason. And it's since I've been talking to you. 
And now, and you can see the intrigue in his face. <laughs> and I'm laughing now. Everybody else is laughing. And he didn't know he was having been. He didn't know he was getting it at all. He had no idea. I bet uh, that felt really good, didn't it? It is nice. I must have. I bet it, it felt fantastic when you when you <laughs> just made him get up out of the chair and have all of his family because. Yeah. <laughs> it is nice. But that felt marvellous, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's it's been a bit. Um, for want of a better word, and this isn't a swear word, we, we, we in the UK call it being cocky, and it's been, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like showing off a little bit, but it's it's to help someone. It's done it in the nicest possible way. Yeah, it's not yeah, just exactly. like showing off a new car. It's done to help somebody, and, yeah. and it's it's done in, it's done almost casually as well. Well, it is. It's very blasé. Yeah. That's the good thing about this as well. Uh, as another example, where I had a lady, she had she had the most. Uh, amazing rheumatoid arthritic fingers I've ever seen that was totally twisted sort of like this all over and one thing that she wanted to be able to do was to as she says wring out a cloth of water so she could wash her windows and she couldn't get her arm any higher than this sort of height besides her arms was all hurting as well so I instilled uh, a little bit of shack uh, just by talking metaphorically uh, so and the lady was in her 80s and so she didn't have a clue what I was talking about but she was very polite and she pretended that she understood but what happened was was that she was very amazed because this lady smoked and what she did was use her two hands to get the cigarette packet open this up take the cigarette out with her mouth and her two hands together to light the lighter to light the cigarette after my metaphors after talking to her uh, I also instilled some other suggestions which we can add to during the DVD. Uh, and this lady, without realising it, picked up the cigarette packet with one hand, lifted the lid with the other hand, <laughs> took out the cigarette, put it in her mouth, took one hand and lit the cigarette with the other hand, put the packet down, didn't think nothing of it until her daughter turned around and said, Mother, do you just realise what you've just done? She went, what? She said, you're smoking a cigarette with one hand? She said, oh! And her fingers was, she was forgetting about this pain, totally gone, totally gone. Yeah, and she'd loosened the joints as well. So they're still so quite twisted. Now, another thing what happened was, I said to her, uh, oh, the, a fly went by and she swatted the fly. <laughs> up here. She was able to do that before. She was very, uh, uh, again, Denise, uh, sadly, Denise has passed away, but a very good friend of mine. Um, she said, mother, Look what you're doing now. She's what she's just her arms up in the air. She's like, oh, I'll be able to wring a cloth out, be able to wash the windows. This lady was over the moon. And this was just in the space of it was suddenly just dawn on them what they've got. Yeah, it's yeah. just using these metaphors. You can use them all the time and, and and you can tell somebody you're actually going to do it and it'll still work. You can just do it without that person knowing, it will work. <laughs> it's very clever, you know what I mean? So I've had people who don't want any false hopes. So basically, I've not told them that we're going to do it. We just do it, and it works. And it works. Suddenly, it, suddenly they're, they're out of the wheelchair, and it's fabulous, isn't it? The old man in the pub, he, he eventually, after scratching his leg, would took the itch and made him go around to the other leg. Made him both his legs itch. Then made him realise that he could move his legs. He took his feet off the off the uh, wheelchair and stood himself up and gave me a big hug because he was crying. What was the rea rest of the family's reaction? Crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, and the girl with the uh, who'd been in a really bad state for seven years after suffering a massive stroke whilst giving birth to one of her children. Uh, this this young boy had never known his mum any other way except being sat in what I call a fetal position. All the left side or her left arm was curled up in the fetal position. Her left leg was twisted in the fetal position. She couldn't speak. So he couldn't understand what she was saying. She slabbered her quite a lot and she also had a straw and a cup of tea and she used to drink to the straw and she was like this, her left eye was permanently blinking um, and her sister who had trepped previously for a, a stroke um, problem she had that went and she asked me if I go see her sister I said well this will be a nice, for me it was a big challenge I thought seven years like this, never known anything else as a child I thought, yeah, I want this challenge. I want to see how powerful this really does get. So I went in, she's living with her mum, and sat on the chair across the across the living room area was two ladies from the spiritualist church who do healing. And 
they're constantly there doing healing, spiritual healing, which I think is absolutely lovely. It's, it's marvellous what they do. It does work. It's very powerful. Um, this lady who I can't mention, she doesn't want me to mention her name. And I, I always say the same thing. What letter comes after S in the alphabet? I said, do you have mum some tea? <laughs> said, yes, please, I'd love one. So she made me a nice big cup of tea. I sat talking to this lady, who I'll call Mrs. X, for want of a better name. So I talked to Mrs. X, and just by talking to her very fast, in a stimulative way, using these particular metaphors, she was very baffled, looking at me very confused, and so like this. And so I'm not done. I was purposely making her answer my questions so I can get her to talk to me. Um, within the space of half a cup of tea, she was sat doing this. So I said, uh, What's the matter? She went, My tongue feels really funny. I said, ah, I can understand what you're saying now. And the speech started to come back. <laughs> and mum came out of the kitchen and said, Say that again. She said, Say what? She said, You're talking to him. I know I am. And then she realised the penny dropped again for her. She went, oh, and then she lifted her hand up, moved it, uh, her left hand was coming back. The feelings are coming back in her arm. Gradually, all this left side's coming back to normal. The two ladies from the spiritualist church were crying because they're just watching this happen before their very eyes. The, the sister and the sister's girlfriend both were crying. Mum was crying. I'm sat there thinking, this is brilliant, you know, it's working even after a seven year one, this is fantastic. So now I'm realising just how powerful this shack is. And the last part was looking at her left leg and I said to her, so how's your left leg? And she said, oh, I can't move that, I can't even feel it. So I just did one little, one little thing, which I will show you during the shack treatment. One little thing, and she nearly shot out of the chair when the feeling just rushed back into her leg, and her leg shot forward in a nice straight line. And she's just looking and looking at me, and I said to her, You think I'm weird, don't you? And she went, I bloody do. <laughs> 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 it was fantastic. Then the nicest thing happened also, the, the woman was self harming, she was burning uh, cigarettes into right. her left arm because she had no feeling there, and she was depressed. Seven years sat in a chair, I think anybody would yeah, be depressed. This weird man who was supping her cup of tea, making her talk, making her feel, making her move, making these limbs come back to life again, making her balance out a full body, uh, she just got up out of the chair as, as quickly as, as she could, because she's considering there's a lot of muscle wasted there. Uh, she went into the bathroom and her mother was crying, and the two ladies and the sisters, everybody was still ready to can't believe it. The, and the two ladies from the church were saying it's a miracle and it really does look like a miracle it, it's, it's that powerful it's fantastic then she came out of the bathroom went to the bedroom came back fully dressed first time she dressed herself in seven years she came back sat on the chair lifting herself up with this left arm moving her left leg and she got the cup of tea with a straw threw the straw on the floor saying i don't effing hear that anymore uh, which was nice, just to be able to hear her speak properly, even though that word came out. <laughs> and that that finished that particular day, that treatment. Now, the, a few days later, this lady's, Mrs. X's husband, rang me up to thank me. And I said, it's not, it's fine, it's nothing. And he, he was trying to offer me money, and I was saying, no, no, I just needed that challenge. It was a fantastic challenge. This really caps it for me that this is so powerful, it needs to be taught to many other people. So the lady said, Would I meet her at her sister's pub, which is Angie, the girl who had trip prior for another stroke? So I said, Yeah, she said, My children want to meet you because all they can do is picture a man with white hair and a white beard and a white robe. <laughs> That's all they could picture. Oh, man, oh. Yeah. So I went to meet them, and the little boy who was seven came running over to me, put his arms around me, and he said, thank you for giving me my mummy back. Yeah, this is this is it, because not only has it an effect on the patient, it's the patient's family as well. Yes. If somebody's exactly. disabled, they need care, and it takes time, it takes money, it takes attention. If you give them that back, that feeling, and that um, the lifestyle they had before, they don't need that anymore, and it it's, it's works for the other families as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. It has a big knock-on effect. And it's just nice to be able to do that, to have that ability 
and the confidence. This is what you need, the confidence. You need to just show that you're in, you're, the, you're the boss, you're in charge, and that unconscious mind is going to listen to you. Now, what, what I want to stim what, uh, stipulate is, um, you're not going to get 100% of every single individual person being able to react like that. But what you will get is an improvement. This is what we're looking at. So if we get an improvement and an improvement and an improvement, gradually they're going to improve to such an extent that they're going to get a lot more back than what they had before they met you. So, so some people, even though they wouldn't have um, a quick cure like that, some people would probably need several treatments before they did get exactly that right. Yes, yeah, and then um, then there's an ongoing the physio. But the what, physio you're, but what you're saying muscles. is that there's no such thing as a failed treatment because even if even if you only give, get a partial improvement, it's still better than it's an improvement. Squat, isn't it? This is it. Yeah, I had a, a chap who'd had a motorbike accident. Um, and he, his spine, everything was okay, his spinal cord was okay, everything was okay, it's just that he couldn't move his left arm and it started to waste away and it had been quite a lot of years, his left arm just totally was wasting. So using the shack treatment, um, I did one little thing just to see if we've got any feeling. After the shack treatment, I, I just touched, I pulled a hair, one little hair from his wrist. The man nearly shot through the ceiling. It's the first time he felt pain in that arm. It's now revitalizing, re-energizing, it's starting to come back to life. The man's arm is at approximately 80% better now than what it was. It can pick a pint up, which is what he wanted. It can pick a pint of beer up with this arm that it couldn't ever do before. I also, in the same pub where Andy worked, um, some new people took over and they had a son who was born with an arm like this. Just it was just a, it looked like a skeleton with skin on this on his left arm. Um, on his sorry, I apologise, his right arm, which made him left-handed. Look at his he's 18, he's going to university, it's just that he's never using this right arm. Um, apparently the mother said when he was younger they should have took him for phys uh, physio. Should have took him for physio. They didn't. So it was he brought himself up, just relying on his left hand, and this, this one was really, really deformed. This what I thought was a shame. So I asked him, would you mind if I have a, have a go at uh, doing his arm? Uh, this same lad now has got two arms, <laughs> equally balanced. <laughs> totally equally balanced. No, I bet that was very... Uh, I, bet, I bet it was like he'd won the lottery or something when he'd had that done, because he'd never had the left arm. Well, I did, this, I did the same as the motorbike right. guy. Yeah. I just pulled the hair. Once I'd done a little bit of treatment, just to see how much he's working, pulled the hair out and he nearly shot through the ceiling. I tickled his arm, he couldn't stop laughing. He had feeling in his arm, which he never knew he had. Then we started to stimulate the fingers and started to get him to squeeze uh, soft tennis balls, this sort of thing. Uh, and now he's, he's, um, he's still left-handed, but now he has the use of his right hand. And every now and then he'll lapse and not think about it and automatically his hand will just go back in that position. Mm. And as soon as he becomes aware of it, it goes back again. So we, we keep making him aware of it all the time so it just becomes a natural part of his, of his, his, his persona. I assume the more and more you do give him the treatments, the more and more he'll, he'll, stop, he'll stop doing that gesture in, in the future because he'll, be, he'll be get used to having the arm. Yes, yes, exactly right. He's used to it now. I mean, he was 18 then. He'll be... 21, 22. I mean, I mean, in his formative years, he was used to not having the arm at all. Yeah, it just was, uh, it's like a, a like a pirate with a patch. Mm. You know, he'd never had the eye, so he don't think about it. He just continue with the other eye. Um, but you need to look after that other eye. Yeah. Uh, so he needs to look after his other arm. Now he's got two arms. Mm. And he's fully functioning now, so he's doing very well. Uh, I've, I, I put an advert in the paper once, and these, quite a few people replied. So I went to visit them. And one lady in Hessel, she all she wants to do is drive a car again. And she'd been two or three years prior, she'd had a stroke, left arm had gone. She was dragging her left leg and still dragging her left leg. So I just sat her down. What letter comes after S in the alphabet? T. Got a nice cup of tea, which is nice. And the lady was sat to my right. Used the metaphor, stimulated the unconscious mind. Next thing you know, her left arm was just moving about, she's looking at her left arm as if an alien had just attached it to her shoulder. She's like, 
And it's just like, this is mine. And then we, then we got the feeling back and we made it balance out so that it become exactly the same feeling as the left to the right. Then I said to her, now walk up to the living room. She walked up dragging this leg. So I said, right, sit yourself down, a bit more shark treatment, balance her out. So walk up and down the living room. She walked up and down the living room, normal. No, no dragging the leg. No dragging walking, the leg. Yeah. And then this is before you finish your cup of tea. And he said, ah, thank you very much, good pay. <laughs> and that's it. It's as simple as that. And, it, and those people, once they've had that treatment, can, also, can help somebody else and do it to the friends. Because obviously they the meet people at the physio. So I've just, I've just learned this new technique, blah, blah, blah. And show them, why not? Why not pass it on? Mm. This is what it's about. Uh, or add it to your repertoire. So if, you're, if you're a hypnotist, you want to use that in your repertoire, it's very powerful. Shack so, so like you're saying, is in um, say in hypnosis, you could use shack as well as the hypnosis. You don't, you don't have to put somebody into a trance, but putting somebody into a trance and doing it would be equally beneficial. If you could put someone the into a trance and then add shack, it would be the mo the most powerfulest treatment that that person could get. But as I, as I try to stress, you don't need, don't need to know to, no. hypnosis. It's not it's not about knowing hypnosis. It's about knowing the techniques that we're going to show you. That's what it's about. Yeah. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you.